We know that collaboration is essential for increasing productivity, maximizing innovative thinking, and coordinating resources to ensure the best outcomes for our organizations. However, we don't often consider the impact effective collaboration has on well-being and emotional support for our team members. In this episode, we're going to uncover why enhancing well-being should be an aspiration when building a culture of collaboration, how collaboration can positively impact well-being, and some considerations that should become foundational when engaging in collaborative teams. By intentionally putting in place structures and processes to minimize isolation, we can ensure our collaborative efforts are having a positive impact on well-being throughout the organization. Intentional and purposeful focus on building a culture of collaboration is the secret for leaders striving to make a difference. In building a culture of collaboration, Curtis and Lorna Hewson will share simple tips, ideas, and strategies to take your organization's collaborative efforts to the next level. Welcome back to another episode of Building a Culture of Collaboration. As always, I'm Curtis Hewson, lead learner and co-founder of Jigsaw Learning. And I'm Lorna Hewson, ditto, <laughs> lead learner and co-founder of Jigsaw Learning. Awesome. And today in this episode, we're going to discuss the critical connection between collaboration and well-being. So I think COVID really brought forward that understanding that um, the focus on balance. How do we ensure balance? How do we ensure not just the aspirations that we're trying to accomplish as an organization, but also recognizing our well-being and the health of our organization is so critically important. And we obviously really believe that how you impact that well-being most significantly is through creating strong teams and a culture of collaboration. And during that time, during COVID, it just became, not that it wasn't there before, yeah. but I think it wasn't so explicit. Right. And during COVID, it became very apparent that there was a need to be really uh, understanding of what uh, people's current state was and how do we support people moving forward in that well-being aspect? Because sometimes we mm -hmm. focus on the tasks at hand that we need to do, but we actually need to create that balance, as you mentioned, between mm -hmm. understanding and being uh, explicit about how we work together alongside of the work that we're actually doing. Absolutely. So let's start off with why should enhancing well-being be an aspiration for organizations when building a culture of collaboration. Again, we've seen the attention that's been placed mm -hmm. on well-being, the, the mental well-being, our physical well-being, social well-being. I've been working with one of a uh, one of the organizations, a school division, where this has become foundational work mm -hmm. for them of defining a culture of wellness that happened within their organization. So we know that the focus on wellness is critically important for us. Yeah, absolutely. And we also know that when there is a positive feeling of uh, built through collaboration, that there's a, a positive environment, that we have higher degrees of satisfaction in, in people's workplaces. Absolutely. We have decreased inc incidence of absenteeism and we have higher levels of productivity when we know that the environment, the collaborative mm -hmm. teams are working together, um, understanding and considering people's well-being. So when you really think about that culture of collaboration, we're trying to build organizations that people not only want to be a part of, but that people want to see grow and succeed mm -hmm. and, and, and be a part of something that that's bigger than them. So. I, I always come back to the why should we focus on well being well part of it is it's just the right thing to <laughs> do how uh, we need to be focused on the success of the people within our organizations not just the outcomes of the organization themselves well and it's not like we can separate here's our work here are the tasks that we need to do right and then here are the people we don't we can't separate those well then it becomes uh, a 
important for us to reflect on how do we uh, combine those pieces and create an awareness of the tasks, of course, that we do through our mm -hmm. business, but then the well-being of the people who we are working with and who are working for us. So I, I do think it's a little bit of that traditional thought of, well, well suck it up, get yeah. done what you need to do to get the job. It or, doesn't go well. It, yeah, it's, it's just... <laughs> the job or the work that you're doing separate it from who you are and what it is that you do we we know that it's linked um so incredibly and we want to create that work environment or that culture that has a positive impact on well-being and i think we want to particularly ensure whether it's consciously happening or unconsciously that we're not doing the opposite and creating toxic um environments or or those cultures that are actually negatively impacting uh, well-being. Yeah, and it it, it also uh, it pop, jumps into my mind the role that leadership plays in that mm -hmm. as well, knowing that you are modeling what needs to happen for the rest of the team, and and understanding that you contribute in a in a high degree mm -hmm. uh, of creating that safe, welcoming, and warm environment that we want to be able to um, enhance and and make that just a part of what we do every day. Yeah, so we're really trying to decrease or limit those feelings of isolation, yeah. of competition, anxiety, lack of trust. You know, we, we know that indicator of um, when you have good people that are leaving or, or seeking um, seeking that that work elsewhere that's probably something that we need to come back and think about how are we promoting well-being so let's go there how can collaboration then positively impact well-being we'll be right back to continue this episode when we create continuums of supports for our school focused on established priorities we are answering the question of what will we do when faced with questions of how to support the needs of our students. But the creation of these continuums are only the first step. Join us for the online workshop, 10 Considerations When Utilizing and Refining Your Continuums of Support, part of our Supporting Collaborative Response series. In this workshop, I will share five ways to effectively utilize your continuum of supports within your school and five ways to further refine your continuums to ensure maximum impact. I'll also be sharing numerous resources, templates and samples, as well as a copy of the recording. Those joining live will also have the chance to interact with me with questions they may have at the end of this session. Register today to learn more about this critical collaborative structure integral within a school's collaborative response. And now back to our conversation. I, I believe to my core that if you can create collaborative cultures where it's just natural that we work together, that it is going to impact mm -hmm. the sense of well-being and connectedness. So I, I think about the idea of being on a sports team and that in that a lot of the satisfaction that comes from from being part of a, a team in that situation is you're you're doing something bigger than just yourself you're contributing to success that not only am i a part of but i'm relying upon others mm -hmm. as well when i'm part of those teams and i'm i'm trying to accomplish goals that i can't necessarily achieve on my own that's that's one of the great things about playing um, team sports that that comes through well and we know for children as you know especially when they get into their into those teenage years how important it is for them to be part of teams mm -hmm. and because there is so much learning that goes on there right. in terms of you know how i work with other people uh, there's a skill set that you start to develop absolutely and even you know how do i support other people and how do i help my teammates and how do i contribute to that greater team we know that those creating creating personal connections mm -hmm. with people happen through our collaborative team and knowing that uh, it sometimes means that we have to be vulnerable 
but we create a space where that vulnerability is a possibility. Well, and we talk about how highly effective teams can be vulnerable, that I, I have that sense of trust that I can share things that I'm struggling with and that not only do I have a reliance upon others, but that others are relying on, on me, which again gives that greater sense of purpose well, that when, you know, sometimes it can come with a little bit of nervousness or anxiety mm -hmm. of, oh my goodness, people are relying on me. But when that's done in a healthy, productive way, it can, again, give that sense of I'm, I'm important mm -hmm. for what's happening within this team, which obviously is going to impact my personal sense of, of being, belonging and well-being. And of course, that uh, being able to limit that sense of isolation, that that the tasks that I have to do every day or that are sent, you know, that are on my agenda, that I'm actually not alone in that mm. and that I can reach out to other people on my team to be able to help me with that. And uh, for other people who understand and knowing that, you know, I'm not I'm not the only one uh in this organization that can do this job but when we set up those teams we can mm -hmm. have conversations with other people to create that support network that allows us to do our job effectively and have that reliance on other people and i i also think too when you create the, that strong sense of team and that culture of collaboration none of us operate at 100 percent 100 percent of <laughs> yeah. the time we are all going to have situations that impact us uh, negatively whether that's through professional or personal areas and when those struggles inevitably emerge um, we want to be a part of a team that's going to be able to help support to help carry even to be able to say i'm not on top of things right now and someone else to jump in yeah. and say let me help let yeah. me see what i can do again that that reinforces the idea that we're not always going to be uh, at our peak performance levels. And when I'm part of a team, we adjust, we shift, we, we can help support mm -hmm. one another at the times when, when myself or one of our team members is, is struggling. Yeah, for sure. And the, and the good news about this <laughs> is that sometimes we think about, you know, creating those environments and building trust and, and, uh, creating a safe place for us to be able to do our work sounds really hard, mm -hmm. sounds really difficult and challenging. And or, how do I even begin? Yeah. Or I need the right people yeah, until yeah. we, <laughs> uh, see a person or two move move on from yeah. our team it's just not then possible we can't do it so i yeah. think this is the part of the episode then where we really want to go to what are some strategies or considerations that really are foundational when engaging in collaboration effective teams and how do we build that with one of the outcomes being higher degrees of well-being this question is brought to you by we collab Designed by educators for educators, this comprehensive digital system aligns with the foundational components of collaborative response. Moving from conversation to action, WeCollab empowers classrooms, schools, and systems to provide the very best response for each and every child by informing action-based decision-making with data and evidence supporting student success. And now back to our conversation. Well, we know Everyone that we know for sure that just putting people together in a team is and call them a team and even giving them a task yeah. is not enough yeah that's right i always like the idea of just putting people in a space together and saying you're a team now uh, <laughs> no you, you might be a group yeah that are <laughs> yeah. that are trying to work together but a team team really is different so yeah. some really specific things that we want to do is we always promote and we're going to put yeah. some links to some different podcasts where we've talked way more in depth on some of the items that we're we're going to be surfacing here. So check out the show notes. But the first one is norms, yeah. creating norms that really clearly articulate our ex expectations of how we agree to engage with yeah. one another, what it'll look like to interact effectively, having those norms clearly understood and articulated and then continuously created by the team yeah co-created yeah 
absolutely foundational to start. We we often say that if you have a team meeting on a regular basis, they need to have norms yeah. in yeah. place. And we often have, uh, when we first talk about this with people, we often have that, uh, you know, we're a team that have been working together for oh, a really yeah. long we, time. We get along great. We're comfortable with each other. We actually, that just seems like an extra step. We don't really need to do that. And we would contend <laughs> that when you are collaborating effectively, which means that we want to be able to have an open culture where we can challenge each other. Oh, yeah, we can debate and argue <laughs> even uh, yeah. and not take it personally because our norms have indicated that we will focus on the issue, not the people. But instance. it is our norms that allow us to do that and to ensure that everyone has uh, their own thoughts about how we collaborate together clearly articulated, which is also why mm -hmm. we need to co-create. Absolutely. So I think another one that is very, very intentional and strategic, and again, can feel a little bit yeah. awkward when we say, well, we just work well together naturally, yeah. is creating rules that when we come yeah. together to meet, have we clearly articulated who's facilitating, who's recording, and then infusing roles such as uh, the interrupter, someone who's going to interrupt when we get off onto a tangent and we're losing our focus. Um, maybe it's someone that's going to be our norm reflect reflection person, and it's their responsibility to be watching for, are we living and following our norms? That idea is that we're distributing leadership yeah. across the team so that when we do come together, no one person is solely responsible for the successful outcome of those discussions and conversations we all share a part mm -hmm. of that and creating intentionally understood roles and then assigning and even in time shifting yeah. those around can be valuable within the team i i would mention though that the facilitator role is really a critical role mm -hmm. and a person who is filling that role is really thinking deeply about the team and about how we're interacting not just again about the tasks at hand right we're and not moving just through chairing that check, the meeting check, check. right <laughs> yeah. but we're actually listening carefully to what is being said how people are interacting with each other how our body language language even mm -hmm. within that team and being able to really think how do I bring all of the voices to the table right. which in the end creates that uh, level of trust and vulnerability well, that we're looking for and you and I have both seen each other do this where yeah. if we're facilitating a conversation we might even have a list of names and are doing <laughs> tallies of who we've yeah. heard from just so that it's that constant reminder of we need everyone's voice to be surfacing to create that psychological safety. Yes. So I think one of the things that we often see um, teams when they come together not spend enough time on is a focus on celebrations. Yeah. And I think this is another really intentional strategy that when we come together, let's take even just a few minutes to celebrate progress that's been made, mm -hmm. growth that we're seeing in time. Accomplishments. Yeah, do we have data? that is supporting and surfacing that but then within that celebration not just a chance to go woohoo but also to reflect and intentionally ask what did we do that led to that success yeah. what we're doing is continually reinforcing high degrees of collective efficacy that we know we are making a team or a difference as a team and yeah. we have evidence that is showing our that. efforts are, are making an impact yeah, and I think that's a really important part is focusing in on the and like you mentioned, you know, only only five minutes at the beginning yeah, of the meeting. Doesn't need to be just, extensive. Just to be able because we don't take enough time to reflect on uh our successes and mm -hmm. how we can learn from those successes to be able to move on to to those next challenges or those next tasks that are coming forward. So you mentioned it doesn't have to be long, maybe even just five minutes or something. And I think yeah. that becomes closely connected with having a clearly laid out and predictable agenda yeah. mm -hmm. that anytime a team comes together and an agenda is not established, we've probably mm -hmm. just opened a door for us to potentially engage in unfocused or um, uncertainty yeah. of where the conversation may be the side going, the side <laughs> conversations. And we're really 
you and I have talked about this often. Whenever we've uh, engaged in a meeting that wasn't as effective as possible, one of the key indicators often is, oh boy, we didn't have an agenda to really yeah. help understand what we're doing when we come. And being able to have that predictable so that it's people well understand where we are going mm -hmm. is, is critically important. So I think there's a, a, a level of understanding there that's important to talk about too. And that is, you know, just first of all, having an agenda yeah. <laughs> is really important for any time we bring people together. But that level of predictability that we create in being intentional about our agenda that every time that we come together we know that we're going to start with celebration yeah there's some consistent that we're gonna review elements. our norms and then we're going to move into the activity of the day whatever that might be mm -hmm. but being able to even establish you know those four or five items that are going to be consistent from time to time creates that level of trust with the team and creates safety for people in knowing what to expect when they're coming together. So we definitely would encourage you to take a look in the show notes for a podcast where we talk about key considerations when you're mm. putting, I think we share 10 within that podcast, 10 things you should be thinking about when creating a predictable and consistent agenda format. And yeah. again, um, just showing up to the meeting and I see it a, a minute before we start, yeah. probably not what we want to be able to do when we're trying to build re the reassurance and again, impacting well-being. If I'm coming into a space and I'm not quite sure where it's going, my anxiety levels yeah, might sure. be up. But if I've had that two, three days before, a week before, whatever that looks like for your organization, I can prepare. I might even go have some conversations about mm -hmm. things that I'm a little bit anxious or uncertain about uh, prior to us getting into that and, space. And for people who have reservations about speaking in a bigger group, then they can be, they can feel prepared and they can yeah, feel absolutely. like they understand what's coming. So I think also then another thing that we can do that positively impacts that sense of well-being through our collaborative efforts is making sure that we're acknowledging contributions from mm. the team and finding opportunities. Yeah. Maybe it's even built right into the agenda. We yeah. always try within our own organizations at the end of meetings to have an opportunity for everyone to share some final words, some comments. And typically what happens in there is acknowledgements of thanks, of, of uh, support, of being able to explicitly identify the contributions of one another. I think that becomes so, so important. Yeah, and when you wrap up your meeting at the end, that's a, a great opportunity to be able to recognize someone who has, you know, put the extra effort in in the mm -hmm. last little while or someone who has achieved a particular accomplishment. That's a great time for us to be able to to just reflect on, mm -hmm. you know, what's happening for each of our team members. And then thinking, too, about that personal reflection on you know, wrapping up your time together, creating a space where you can just get everyone's uh, last reflections or last mm -hmm. thoughts or last words in, of the meeting and doing a quick around the room where everyone has an opportunity to make that last statement for our, your time together. So, and I think this comes back to when we're leading and building that culture of collaboration is trying to make those acknowledgements public whenever possible yeah. that yeah. um you know it's it might be an email to this person to say uh great work on this but let's cc the rest of the team to be able to reflect on that as well and again when we're in um spaces uh where we're in discussion and meetings being able to make those public mm -hmm. becomes so important so what we're doing is through all of these different strategies over time we're trying to create that sense of trust that space where a person can express when they are struggling, when they need help, that, um, again, we're, we're really raising and solidifying that sense of psychological safety mm -hmm. that we know is critically important when people are working in teams and is highly impactful on each and every one of our 
sense of well-being. Absolutely. But the really exciting thing that happens through this when you really pay attention to the well-being of your team or teams, then often what we see is that there is a greater impact beyond that teamwork as well. well so yeah. just as people interact in your organization, then uh, they've now built trust and they've built relationships through that through the teams that that goes actually beyond the the actual collaboration of yeah. the teamwork so you and i actually had an opportunity to talk with a staff member at a large high school who had been really putting in some intentional structures around collaboration and that was one of his responses <laughs> is yes we've seen success through our efforts with this but one of the key success is yeah. the adult feeling of network, of well-being, of connections, of people who I may not have really interacted with in a meaningful way, now stopping in the hall and asking, how has this been going for you? And just the yeah. deeper connections. We'll make sure we include it because it's a really insightful um, thoughts or, or sharing of experiences that he, he brings forth around how the collaborative efforts have had such an incredible impact on mm. the sense of connectedness and overall well-being and health of of their organization yeah and there are just so many positive outcomes that come out of being really intentional about your structures and processes and how you bring people together in those teams absolutely so with that, it brings us to the end of another episode. Uh, for those that are aspiring to establish, sustain, and deepen a culture of collaboration, we know it brings with it many positive outcomes, but I hope what we've been sharing today that one of those is the well-being of the individuals, but the overall well-being of the organization. Good Absolutely. collaboration impacts wellness. Absolutely. So with that, we'd love for you to please share uh, out with us in the comments, uh, send us an email anyway of how you are enhancing your collaborative efforts with a direct focus on the well-being of the team. We'd love to be able to hear your experiences uh, around this as well when you're building out that culture of collaboration in your organizations. So until next time, we wish you all the best and look forward to connecting again soon. Take care. For more on collaborative response, visit jigsawlearning.ca or join the JL Insider to receive access to newly added resources and content. Make sure to follow us on social media. Subscribe to the podcast and the Jigsaw Learning YouTube channel to access past and upcoming episodes. Join us again as we continue to share tips, ideas, and strategies to help you continue to refine your culture of collaboration.